So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the new regulations mean for the industry. I've had a few days to review them. We've worked for years to get to this point. Passage of the Farm Bill was a huge accomplishment, but it was just the beginning. And now we've got a lot of work ahead of us to make sure that this can be successful. The new USD regulations mean the beginning of a new era where hemp is now agriculture instead of being a controlled substance. It provides much certainty to producers. We feel that USDA mostly followed the roadmap that Congress laid out, which was fairly clear and limited. However, there are some areas of concern and meddling by the DEA and drug czar's office is very evident. The industry will need to work with USDA and Congress to ensure the regulations are amended to allow the US industry to operate successfully, to grow the US market and to maintain its competitive position in the world market. To give a little background, brief background on Vote Hemp, we are a nonprofit advocacy group that was founded in 2001. Our mission was solely to bring back commercial hemp farming in the United States. We began working with members of Congress to try to get legislation introduced, and in 2005, we helped draft the first Industrial Hemp Farming Act with Representative Ron Paul. Later, we worked with Representative Ron Wyden to get the first Senate bill introduced in 2012. And we also worked with Representative Polis in 2013 on his amendment to the Farm Bill and also with Senator McConnell's office as they worked to expand that language into what ultimately became the 2014 Farm Bill Hemp Provision, Section 7606. We also helped to draft and pass the 2018 Farm Bill language and ensured that tribes were included. And we worked very hard to try to remove and then limit the felon provision that was added into the bill uh, once it reached the, uh, the, the Senate Agriculture Committee. We've been working for decades also with states, including California, Kentucky, and a number of others on the hemp laws. So what are some of the things that the industry needs for success? One of the most important things is hemp genetics. We grew hemp in this country for, you know, for centuries. And in fact, the USDA used to do research on it and develop some varieties that were good for farmers back in the 30s and 40s. However, all those genetics have been lost and the industry has changed and the needs of today's farmer are different than what farmers from, from 70 years ago were, were looking for. So research on genetics, development of, of stable hemp genetics for both fiber, for grain, for uh, extraction and CBD, uh, these all need to be developed. And the, some of that's underway, but we don't yet have uh, everything that we need for all the different areas that want to be able to grow hemp for the different climates and uh, elevations, as, as well as for the specific types of hemp that will meet the standards uh, that we have and also give farmers a, a profitable crop. We're also looking for reasonable and accurate sampling and testing require, requirements from the USDA. Crop insurance, there's another big one uh, that is uh, that is definitely being developed now. Uh, it's likely to be rolled out in select states in 2020. Another big area is investments in hemp processing to provide a path to market for farmers. Uh, we need to update state legislation now that this uh, new regulations are out. There's a number of requirements that may require updates to either state legislation or regulations in order for those states to be compliant with the new farm bill. We need regulatory certainty from the FDA. It doesn't appear that we're gonna hear from them uh, in 2019, uh, and it's not clear exactly how much longer we'll have to wait. But uh, Congress is also looking at this and we definitely need some, uh, uh, some, some uh, certainty on the uh, issue of selling extracts. The FDA has created a lot of gray, uh, you know, uncertainty and gray, and uh, we need that cleared up. Formal banking guidance would be helpful. The uh, National Credit Union Administration recently issued some guidance and there have been some positive steps, but there's still a lot of questions at banks uh, as to how they do business with the industry. The USDA regulations are helping with that, but we need more. And then finally, interstate transportation. The USDA did address this as far as a legal issue, uh, but we still could use some more guidance on how to transport that so that when a local authority uh, you know, uh, inspects a shipment, they know they can tell that it's a legal shipment and not uh, impede it from interstate commerce. So just briefly, I'm gonna review the minimum requirements specified in the 2018 Farm Bill. 
they were pretty limited and that was the approach we were expecting USDA to take is just do the minimum and let the states add anything that they want. So it was a maintain information regarding the land on which hemp is produced through the licensing process to create a procedure for testing the crop, a procedure for conducting an annual inspection that's limited to one per year by statute, a uh, procedure for the effective disposal of products that are produced in violation of the uh, Farm Bill, a procedure to comply with enforcement procedures, and a certification that the state or tribe has the resources and personnel to carry out all the requirements. So USDA regs are out, what's good? What are some of the positive things that we see in there? Number one, uh, we wanna thank USDA for working very hard to get this done. Uh, there was a lot of work that went into this, these regulations and they did it in a very short period of time, uh, less than nine months actually, when they first got the directive from Congress, we were going through a government shutdown and uh, Secretary Purdue and the staff at Agricultural Marketing Service and the other departments have worked very hard to try to get these regulations out in a timely fashion. We're really thankful for that. Uh, this helps to provide that certainty that the industry and farmers need about how hemp will be regulated going forward. I'd like to also note that while the 2018 Farm Bill is now fully in effect as of Thursday when the regulations were published, uh, the states can, can continue to operate under the 2014 Farm Bill provisions for another year. So that st if states need a little more time to get this figured out, they have an option to continue to operate under, under the older provisions of the 2014 bill. Crop insurance, as I mentioned, is coming in 2020. The USDA has mentioned whole farm revenue protection and also an FSA, non-insured crop disaster assistance programs being available for hemp producers. Hemp's eligible for NRCS conservation programs. There's more on the USDA website about that. There's a new requirement for FSA uh, acreage reporting. That's the Farm Service Agency. We think this is really important. It's critical to track the uh, progress of the industry and to see how much hemp is being grown on any given year. So that's helpful. Uh, the USDA also uh, interpreted the felon ban in a limited way to, to apply it only to licensees. So for example, if you have a farm manager or a uh, worker that works for you, you don't have to get background checks on them. It's only the uh, the folks that are actually investors or, or, li or the license holders themselves that actually have to do that. Uh, also, hemp exports are not affected in any way by these new regulations. Uh, the USDA also reaffirmed that states cannot block interstate transportation. Probably need some additional clarification as we go forward, but this is very helpful. And I think it's a little more final than when just when the legislation passed. And then finally, uh, no federal seed certification program initially. Uh, ultimately, this may be a, a very important and helpful for the industry, uh, but there's a question as to whether it should be done at the federal level and how it should be done. And USDA had questions about how to go about it and wasn't sure that they could actually accomplish that uh, initially. So they're seeking feedback uh, on that. So what are some of the things that we don't like uh, or that are really concerning about the new regulations? Number one, the testing requirements are very onerous. Uh, they require states and tribes to test every lot that's harvested. And uh, unlike what we have today, where some of the states have implemented random testing uh, program and test uh, only portions of the, of the crops that are out there in order to ensure compliance, they're now gonna require every single lot to be tested. This is unnecessary in our opinion. Uh, sample requirements also don't require a full homogenized whole plant sample. They did improve it somewhat uh, over what some states have done. Uh, the top third of the plant is now sampled, uh, the floral material from the top third of the plant, but uh, we think that could be improved and, and should be as well because the definition uh, of, the, of the plant says it's the THC levels of the plant by weight, not just of the flowers. So uh, also samples must be taken by a USDA approved sampling agent or a law enforcement agent. Uh, we don't know yet all the details on what that is. There is a sampling procedure that they've released. We're not sure exactly how the training is going to go or how easy it's going to be to get sampling agents up and, and uh, ready for the next harvest season. Uh, and then there, a big concern was the, uh, the distinction between negligence versus sort of an intentional when it comes to uh, a hot crop. Um, the USDA chose to make a cutoff at a half a percent so essentially anybody who's found to be growing a crop that was over a half a percent could potentially be 
viewed as, as, as uh, not just negligent, but uh, uh, criminally uh, liable. Uh, this is clearly too low, and it's a major concern we're going to be sharing with USDA, and we're definitely going to have to push to get that increased. Uh, the harvest has to be completed in only 15 days. We've heard feedback that that's, that's problematic. Uh, you know, sometimes the, that, that's the 15 days from the time that the uh, samples are taken. Uh, often sampling can take at least a minimum of, uh, you know, the sample testing rather can be take a minimum of five days. And we've heard quite longer in a number of states. And so the idea that uh, you have to complete the harvest within 15 days is unreasonable. In addition to that, there's weather factors and other things that could could affect that timeline. So we, we think USDA needs to expand that that window probably to at least 45 days, but certainly uh, certainly more, well more than 15. Also, um, the USDA uh, initially will do a year-round application program if uh, for any state that's not doesn't have its own program where people would be applying through USDA, but then later goes to only a 90-day window. And that window we don't think is sufficient to cover for cultivation that's happening in greenhouses or new people. And uh, the timing on it doesn't allow for people that want to do it close to the season, for example, in January or February, it would be too late to apply uh, for a license. Another problem, DEA registered lab mandate. Uh, this We looked into this and uh, it can take nine months or to maybe a year or more just to get registered. So if a lab doesn't already have this, uh, that's a problem and there's no, um, there's no grace period for labs to get, uh, you know, to get this registration. Uh, again, showing the signs that uh, we don't think the USDA stuck this in here. And then the disposal of any hot hemp uh, can only be done by a DEA approved handler of marijuana. This is a huge problem. We think this is going to be a problem for states and uh, it's, it's totally unreasonable and it was not called for in the congressional uh, uh, bill. So in the farm bill, it really doesn't, uh, doesn't specify that at all. So there's some silver lining that we noticed. One thing that uh, we wanted to highlight was the uh, was the measurement of uncertainty. Uh, we did note that the DEA or the USDA is requiring testing of crops and and sticking straight to a hard 0.3% uh, on the determination. And they're also using total THC and not just delta nine. So that's going to make it difficult for a number of the uh, varieties that are out there and available. However, the measurement of uncertainty was added. And we think that there needs to be some more focus on that because there is a, a, essentially it's a margin of error and there's a measurement of uncertainty can be calculated not just in the testing, but also potentially in the sampling. We may need to do some kind of a study to determine what that's going to be and it may take some time to figure that out. But we think the measurement of uncertainty could be significant and it could provide some flexibility on THC levels, uh, you know, so that hopefully if somebody comes in at, uh, you know, 0.39 or 0.42 or whatever, that this measurement of uncertainty would still allow that crop to be within the margin of error and uh, not get uh, uh, destroyed. So one of the other things I want I want to shift to now is to, to mention that uh, uh, Vote Hemp and Vicente Cedarberg uh, worked together to develop a model hemp production plan for states. Uh, that is out there and available for free at the uh, American Hemp Campaign website. Um, we, uh, we included input from a number of other industry groups. We were very appreciative to get that uh, their participation, including uh, APA, the American Herbal Products Association, the Hemp Roundtable, the Hemp Industries Association, the National Hemp Association, and Ag Hemp Solutions. The plan will, we are going to work to, to uh, update this now that we have the DEA regulations, but this can be very helpful for your state regulators. And we encourage everybody to uh, to, to check that out if uh, if they're working with state regulators and want to use have something as a as a model to use so that they don't have to start from scratch. Finally, I want to highlight a bill that I think uh, is you know an example of the kind of things that we're going to need in the future to can make sure this industry continues to be successful. We've got uh, HR 3652. This is the Hemp for Victory Act that was introduced by uh, Representative Gabbard of Hawaii. Um, it's kind of a kitchen sink bill. It's got a lot of different provisions in it that are support different types of research that might help the industry. For example, uh, researching uh, whether or not uh, hemp foods could be included in school lunches or uh, we're looking at uh, so the CBD extracts and whether they might be helpful for other uh, other other uses as well. So. Uh, you might want to take a look at that. We're certainly looking to get people to uh, to go to votehemp.com and uh, send in letters to their um, 
legislators and let them know they support this. And hopefully we can get legislation like this passed that will help support the industry overall. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to the good folks here at uh, Vicente Suderberg. I wanna thank them for all the work that they've been doing and uh, really appreciate uh, collaborating with them on this, uh, this webinar today.